Now, our next guest swam from Camp Yantrum to Scotland in 12 hours and 21 minutes and in doing so achieved several records. Do you think we'll the earliest swim of the North Channel and been the oldest person to make the distance? Before we speak with Fardo Somerville, let's have a look at his grueling challenge. joins us now that looked cold it was cold man. it was how cold it was probably the coldest it was ever done in because we were on the back of our coldest winter for 62 years records for the north channel have only started uh, just over 60 years ago 1947 was the first successful crossing of it so i would think i'm safe to say it was the coldest it was ever done it was also the earliest it was ever done the temperature there was uh, on average between 9.5 and 10.5 and degrees the whole day, and out in the middle it was 9.1 degrees. Okay, what was it like when you got into the water? It was just uh, 11 degrees when I started on the Antrim coast, just at the back of Donaghy Pier, um, and which would be warmer, very close to the coast. It's colder when you get out into the middle, and the, the water is much, much deeper. Yeah, of course. How do you prepare for something like that? Um, I've had a rigid rain, uh, training scheme for the last couple of years. I swam the English Channel two years ago, and I started marathon swimming in bed four years ago when I decided I wanted to do the English Channel. So in each of the last three years, I've swam over a thousand kilometers each year, which is a million meters, okay. 40,000 lengths of your local pool. And uh, why? What's driving you to make these do these swim and endure horrendous conditions? Um, it's just something that I actually developed into over the last six years. Uh, I turned up in High Rock and Malahide and I met a fantastic bunch of people out there, uh, primarily co-members of Eastern Bay Swim Team, and I have swam with them every Sunday for the last six years, and I just built up the, the amount of distance that I've done. I've done the Lancer Sea Swims, and uh, which are swims of between 1200 meters and 1800 meters and uh, looking really looking forward to the Lee, uh, Lee swim this Saturday and the Liffey swim in a couple of weeks time but even with them I found that at half an hour it was too short for me and I absolutely love swimming in the sea and I just lose myself swimming in the sea. For 20 hours? Isn't yeah. that what it took you this swim? This swim took 12 hours and 21 minutes. Uh, well, it was over 20 miles. It was over three, it was about 22, 24 miles. I'm waiting actually for the confirmation from my pilot, Quinton Nelson, in, in Donna D, who mapped out exactly the route. Yeah, but because you couldn't go on a straight line. Can't go on a straight line because even in 12 hours you have two tides. So we started off with taking advantage of the, the tide. So we headed off in a northeast direction rather than directly east, which is where Scotland is from uh, Donna D. So we went northeast for, for a couple of hours, and in the space of three and a half hours, we had made nine miles which was fantastic progress, but then it took another nine hours to complete just slightly more than that distance uh, again because I had a tide against me for over Whoa. hours. Okay, now the rules are, when, when you're making a swim like that, is that you cannot be in touch with the boat, as in physically in contact. No, no, you can't, you can't touch the boat. And the, the, the rules allow the boat to run over you once or twice if the weather is that bad, but you can't touch the boat and you certainly can't use it to lie on for anti it's in touching the boat is just out altogether. So, you know, you have to feed uh, every 45 minutes. So they throw in a, a bottle of uh, energy drink on a string, and the string can go out about 40 feet as you're trying to gulp it down. Yeah. Um, and maybe a banana, uh, for which is for nourishment, and for a cramp, and a, the odd uh, half a Mars bar or so. And each break it would take. It was taking actually quite long uh, a couple of weeks ago with, with the cold and everything, you know. But it, when I did the English Channel, I stopped 18 times 
for an average of uh, 20 seconds, which was a total stopping time of only six minutes right. in the 12 hours and 40 it took me to do the English Channel. So the stops were a little bit uh, longer at this time because the coldness, and I need a little bit of encouragement from Mags and John and Tom and Martin on the boat. Because your family and, were on board. My they? wife was on board. Yeah. I have uh, two sons, on and Connor, and unfortunately they couldn't be on the boat. And my other son is in living and working in Washington, D.C. Uh, my younger son has just finished uh, college here and he was walking in Dublin. But they were with you in spirit because Absolutely. you wrote their yeah. names on your hands. I, uh, Why was that? I, a, a friend of mine and, and a very famous swimmer, Steve Redmond, had a mantra that he uses kids' names and I had an E and a C on each palm. And when I needed to get going and when I needed to speed up, I was using the Owen Connor as a mantra to keep going on the swim. Were well, you actually saying their names? I was actually saying their names each stroke, each stroke when I needed it, you know. Um, about two hours into the swim, I could feel actually could actually feel pain in my kidneys, um, and that was bad news because that means you're hypothermic and you have about half an hour before that converts into just not being able to function at all. So okay. at that stage, I knew, knew I needed to up up the speed and up the effort. So for about ten minutes, I was okay. actually gone into a sprint and being there and calling their names, and then that actually had to go on for about half hour. To Continue to generate the heat and like uh, and and try and keep going through it today. Okay, okay. Uh, it, it's so endurance uh, uh, to try and take that on in the first place. But when you're swimming along and you look down into the water and all of a sudden you see a shark beneath you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that puts me on the boat, or at least a breakneck speed on the shore. Well, I I I. I I got an awful fight when I saw, I saw the shark and he was only about uh, two and a half metres below me and a beautiful that's blue colour. Right. That's a nine feet and, and actually I remember thinking that's about eight feet below me and thinking, geez, we're back in the Imperial and now we're worried or something, <laughs> you know. Um, but when I, when I saw that, I saw that and I looked and I, I, I did get an awful fright and I looked across to see how, how near was I from being rescued and I was about... 15 metres from the, from the boat, which is what you maintain the whole time, and uh, the, the shark swam under me and passed me out in front of me, and I decided, ah, to have it, this is too important, so I keep okay, going. But the thrashing of the water attracts it. Yeah, I, uh, hopefully it was a gummy shark, you know, the most prevalent shark around the Irish coast is the basking shark, yeah. Uh, yeah. but you, ca you can't really tell now, you know, but he passed under me another three times now, and I was... So he was entertaining on the pot. I think he was kind of sort of saying, well, I'll go home and get the family and sort of then, you know, and, you know, one of us, this actually tastes like chicken, you know, but I decided to say, just going to keep going and keep going, and I did, you know, and when I got back onto the boat, uh, Quentin Nelson said to me, he said, we didn't want to worry you, but I, I saw a shark fin at about quarter past nine this morning, I said, well, I don't want to worry you, because I saw the rest of them four times after that, you know, well, uh, that was it, you know. After the swim, you found out that you were the oldest man. To do this with? I only found out the next morning because we, we went to, when we arrived in Port Patrick, we were met by Maggie Kidd, and Maggie Kidd was the youngest and probably the best looking ever to do the uh, channel, the first Scottish woman to do it. And uh, Maggie, and, uh, it was a great friend of mine, great support over the years, and she travelled 70 miles last Sunday week with, the, wow. with her family to see the finish of the, of the swim. And then we had to finish it, we went round to Port Patrick, and she presented me with a bottle of scotch. And took us off to local pub, you know. So we would just straight straight into you. Oh, it's a bit of boat, a bit of boat, you know. And then I got home at half one and, and to bed at half three, and I was up at ten to seven when I started looking stuff. And I, I went back and looked at who had done it before and researched and found out that I was I, at fifty and certainly the by far the oldest. The next was forty five, and the next was forty forty, and the rest. If you'd known beforehand, would that have affected you? I, d I think I wouldn't have bought it if I'd have known that that was going to be the case because I tell you, you know, and it's, you know, but, I, you know, I, I went through to the English Channel and did this and I went through it. Um, but it was for a good cause, though. You couldn't have backed out. You were raising funds along the way. Raising funds, this time for, uh, uh, can for research for the Irish Cancer Society. And I've done uh, different charities and the different marketing swims that I've done. I did cystic fibrosis research for Beaumont Hospital. I, I did the Acting Adelaide. Uh, uh, Adolescent Addiction Centre for the uh, Dunleary, Hope Dunleary swim, and I did uh, the lifeboats for the Inish man to uh, Rossadale swim. So. You, you made the swim on Father's Day, but it was in memory of your mom. Oh yeah, well, I did a cancer research. My son Owen in, in the States asked me to do cancer. My mother died of it, and he and Hope were very close enough, so okay. I was proud to do for that, you know. Well, congratulations. <laughs> it's a fantastic achievement. Thank you very much. I, I've been on the boat shipping support. I don't know if I'd be in the water. <laughs> Did you cry at all? 
Not so much this, this time, you know, but uh, no, the, I tell you, the, the, it, it was slightly different to the English uh, English Channel swim, though, you know, and a uh, lot, a lot of effort, a bit of balling in place, a bit of balling, a bit of reminiscing, and a bit of talking to the parents and grandparents and the likes, you know, you got a lot of time on your hands. Chatting away while you're swimming there. Well, listen, Fergal, well done, congratulations, and best of luck with your next challenge. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, you at home may have a story for us on the show. If you do, here's how to get in touch. If you've got a story you'd like to share, or if you